Hey guys, Ivan here, and in today's video we get a couple of very interesting topics. The first one is gonna be about Sadiq Hadjovic, who is competing this weekend at a Chicago Pro. His plan is to compete in men's physique, but in case he doesn't make the weight, he's gonna jump into the classic physique. And today he posted a couple of shots, him doing classic physique poses, in which he's also showing his legs, we can see his entire physique in classic poses, so let's take a look at this and let's see how well would this guy actually do in classic physique today. Now you guys probably know that he already placed third at a Mr. Olympia in classic physique, but that was back in 2016, that was the very first year of classic physique, but I don't think that matters one bit, the category evolved so much since then, but so did Sadiq's physique as well. Now he's looking a lot, a lot better than back then, and he's bringing really good conditioning to this show. Now, in all likeliness, he will still do the man's physique. And I noticed some comments from people saying that he won't do very well in men's physique because apparently he doesn't have the right shape for it. This is your current men's physique Mr. Olympia champion, Ryan Terry. And people who are saying that Sadiq can't do well in men's physique anymore, you guys also probably know that he was a runner up at the Mr. Olympia many times back when Jeremy Buendia was dominating. And people are saying that also this category evolved too much, that Sadiq is no longer in contention to be a top. 10 guy the Mr. Olympia or something like that and I'm not an expert in man's physique I don't follow the division but from what I saw I mean when you look at this physique Ryan Terry I don't see why Sadiq wouldn't do well against him for example the arguments that people make about Sadiq and him not being able to do well in man's physique is because his abs are not the most symmetrical and that his shoulders are not uh, wide enough or that his clavicles are too short. I mean, look at Ryan Terry. I don't think he is that much different from Sadiq Hadjovic. Again, I don't know much about his category, but I know that Sadiq won Pittsburgh Pro last year, and based on the way his physique is looking, with wide shoulders, broad chest, super small waist, as long as he brings good conditioning and great presentation, which I know he can do, I believe he can do really well at a Mr. Olympian man's physique. I can even see him winning. But again, I'm not an expert on that, and also, even though I think he might win, even in the Mr. Olympia men's physique, I still would prefer to see him in classic physique. Because honestly, this is a really good classic physique. Conditioning is spot on, legs are actually looking very good, detailed and really big as well, like compared to his upper body, you could say that his legs are a dominant body part. I think his legs are in perfect proportion to his upper body. The waist is small, once again, the shoulders are broad, conditioning is great, he's very complete, the back is not as good as the front, but it's not a weak back, and like in classic physique, I think it's more about the structure and the shape than anything else, really. Conditioning, shape, structure, those are the biggest factors. Small waist is a must in classic physique, and Sadiq's got it. And like I said, conditioning is spot on, he got really ripped for this show and dry and he's very detailed as you can see as well, so I think he will still probably make the weight for man's physique, but man, I wish he did the classic physique as well, because classic physique is bodybuilding, it's just a smaller bodybuilding, man's physique is something else entirely. But classic is classic bodybuilding, I don't know why they call it classic physique, I would prefer if they called it classic bodybuilding, but that's a different division, we have it over here in Europe, I competed in that division, so I guess that's why they named it differently when they created it back in 2016, but anyways, Sari Hadjic, his physique is looking great right now, I think this is an awesome classic physique, I'm sure the other guys, the top guys are bigger than him, but I don't think he's lacking any size, really. Could he be bigger? Sure, he has 10 pounds until his weight cap, but that's not like he's 30 pounds away from the weight cap, like, he, he's close, he's very close, and I don't think weight really matters that much, if you have great shape, structure, if you have like really good conditioning, you have complete physique, you can create a really good illusion, and you can even appear bigger than some other guys, and he also has some height, like he's not a short guy, I think he's like around 6 foot, something like that, so I'm definitely all for classic physique, and the way his physique is looking, I think he could do really well, potentially challenge for the title in this show, in Chicago Pro, I don't think there are any big names in that category, I think his name would probably be the biggest one, 
If you guys know somebody else who is doing it, who is very good, let me know down below. And also tell me, what do you think? If he wins Chicago Bro in Classic Physique, which I don't know if he's going to do, but if he did it, if he wins as well, what would he do at a Classic Physique Mr. Olympia? Could you see him in top 10? Maybe? Seriously, think about it. Tell me down below in the comment section what you think. Alright, let's now talk about a Chicago Pro Open Division. And this show is gonna be crazy. It's gonna be nuts. Because we have so many freaking guys who could end up winning this freaking show. I have zero idea who is gonna win this. I have honestly no idea. So I highlighted the bigger name guys that I know about. So Tim Boresheim, Phil Klahar, Stanimal, Nathan Nepler, Muhammad Fuda, Jordan Hutchinson, Justin Mackey, Hassan Mustafa, Robin Strand, and Vlad Suharuchko. Now, it's interesting that on Fuad Abiyad's podcast, Ian Valier, who is basically, I think he won every single prediction. Those guys are doing predictions for every show that happens, and Ian Valier wins every single one. I think this year, he won every single bet, always. It's crazy, I know. The guy knows bodybuilding, he really knows bodybuilding. And in his prediction, I don't know if he changed it later, but he said that he thinks the winner is gonna be Jordan Hutchinson. This guy right here. So I think he competed last year for the first time as a pro, and this is what his physique looks like right now. Honestly, I heard his name before, but I'm not gonna pretend that I know what he's gonna look like on stage. I don't remember him from the stage. I don't know why Ian picked him. I can see that he is very complete, that he is in good conditioning right now, but why pick him out of all the guys? Like, that's a really bold prediction. Like, he's a new guy. There's a lot of established guys. Some of them won pro shows. So, I don't know why would he choose this guy, but, you know, he's in the mix now, I guess, because Ian said so. If I had to pick someone, I think I would opt for Tim Budesheim. I think I would go with him first. He was second at one Cougar Pro last weekend, but he has competed a little bit too many times this season. He did a New York Pro, and I think uh, California Pro, and now one Cougar Pro. I'm not sure, but maybe he was in one of the European shows, but this is gonna be his fourth show at least, if not fifth show. So because of that, I don't know how fresh will he look, but he definitely did make progression from show to show. He was getting better, but I think he peaked pretty much perfectly for the Vancouver Pro. So I don't know if he can repeat this kind of peak again, but, you know, based on his track record this season, being so consistent and placing second at the Vancouver Pro and just based on his physique, which I think is very good, I think he's probably the favorite in my opinion. So I would choose him. And then for the second spot or the first spot, I would go with Mo Fuda, Mohamed Fuda. Because, I mean, yeah, last year he was fifth at the Romania Pro, he was prepped by Hunter Rambud. But I think now when he's working with Stefan Kinzel, I think Stefan Kinzel is going to be very, very super devoted to, uh, to this guy. And I think they're going to bring something insane to the stage. I think he has a ton of potential, crazy shape, crazy muscle bellies. And I think he's bringing really good conditioning. But because he was fifth at Romania Pro last year, I don't know if he can win this show. But I think based on what I'm seeing... I think he's gonna be top two. And then there is this big man right here, who was uh, completely, totally, absolutely off at Toronto Pro. But when he is on, when he is 80% on, like he was last year at Vancouver Pro when he won, he is very, very dangerous. He is bigger than all of these guys. So if he fixed his conditioning, he can win. He can win the show, but... I'm not convinced that he did that. He didn't really show his physique, but there are a couple of clips of him training and, you know, posing in his tank top, and we can kind of get the idea of his conditioning. So I don't think he's completely dry. Like, I don't think he really got that next level conditioning. Maybe he's gonna be just enough on to do really well, to be in the top three or to win the show. Because you, you can't forget about this guy. You can't underestimate him. He had like four weeks, something like that, from Toronto to now. 
which is not exactly a lot of time. I think he really needed like eight weeks from Toronto Pro to get in really good shape, but if he really stepped on the gas pedal, I think in four weeks he could have made enough improvements to be at like 70%, which in his case, with all his muscle mass, with his shape and with his crazy roundness and all that, with the freak factor, you know, it still can be enough. But is he gonna be in improved conditioning? From what I'm seeing in his photos and updates, I mean, I can't really tell much. He's not showing like his lower body, he, his lower back and stuff like that. And if he's not in crazy condition, he's not going to be even top six at this show. Like he was in the Toronto Pro. And I don't think I see that level of a change. I don't see his face changing. And what I'm seeing like a little bit from his arms and shoulders and chest and a little bit of back. I think he may have improved a little, but not enough. Best case scenario, third place, but more likely somewhere around sixth, maybe. But once again, if I'm wrong with this, if his conditioning is actually improved, he can be the winner of the show, but I don't think that happened. As far as the other guys, Vlad Suharuchko, he's great on social media, but not that great on stage. Robin Strand, you just saw him training with uh, Hassan, he's gonna be in great condition, but his physique doesn't have the best structure. Justin Mackey can be really good, uh, Nathan Epler and Stanimal, they are smaller guys, former 212 guys. I don't think they are, you know, up to par to the other, like, freaks, open guys. And Phil Klahar is, like, 51 or 52 at this point. I don't think he's gonna be really in contention. So, once again, in my opinion, Tim Bodesheim first, Mohamed Fuda second. Let me take a risk with Hassan Mustafa and say he's gonna be in third. And then, let's say, Jordan Hutchinson, because Ian said so. And then, in the end, I would say Robin Strand, and then maybe Vlad Suharuchko. That's my top six, guys. It's really crazy. It's really impossible to predict this. But that's my prediction. That's my guess. You guys can tell me yours down below in the comment section. And then we can take a look at them after the show happens. It's going to be interesting, this one. And lastly, at 11 weeks out, we got a little physique update from uh, Derek Lansford. It's not a full physique update. It's only the legs. But I've been saying this entire offseason that Derek Lansford didn't make any progress. That he didn't get bigger. And the main reason I was I, I wanted to see him make progress is because of the legs. Because on stage, once he depletes, once he gets shredded, the legs are kind of losing their fullness. And I wanted to see him like get them even bigger, you know, get them big and keep them big so when he diets down, they stay. So do I see that his legs are bigger than last year in the offseason? No. No, I do not. I think they're looking pretty much the same, right? Like last year. Then, on the other hand, like his legs are also looking as big as they can be, <laughs> right? In the offseason, at least. They are literally forming a circle. But when he dies down, he loses them. Maybe by some magic pulled by Honey Rambert, this year his legs will stay. And his upper body is going to get shredded and everything is going to be super lean and he's going to be full and big everywhere and also ripped, shredded. But I'm not really confident that that's going to happen. However, he did do a lot of good work in promoting the sport. Even now, guys, at 11 weeks out, he's traveling. He's going to Canada for some reason. At 11 weeks out, I would expect him to get really serious at like 20 weeks out if he wasn't that serious the entire offseason. But no, no, he's still traveling, doing the promotion, focused on business, which is going to grant him a couple of points, I'm sure, from the IBB and the Olympia guys. But if on that stage, Harris' physique looks 10 times better, it's not going to help him that much. He can't win if he doesn't look the best, or at least close to the best. So, in my eyes, at this point, I don't see Derek winning again. But I also had no idea he was gonna win last year. So, anything is possible. You guys tell me down below what do you think. And if you guys enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. And if you're watching this channel regularly and you haven't subscribed yet, just please, do me a favor, click the subscribe button. Thank you guys so much. See you soon, all the best, and bye-bye.